Hey there, welcome there. This is Clifford Bates, and welcome once again to reading Montesquieu's Spirit of the Laws. Today we are looking at book 20, which is the second book within part four of Spirit Montesquieu's uh, magnum opus, we can say, right? Uh, or his great book, uh, Spirit of the Laws. Um, which the whole book four is kind of the section on commerce, right? The question of commerce, which is what is Montesquieu's one of Montesquieu's big points. If people think that if you think um, we always think of Montesquieu's separation of powers, but also Montesquieu's one of the biggest doctrines about the importance of commerce, a big advocate of the role of commerce has in shaping society and shaping relationships of peoples and states. So let's look at this. The laws in relation to commerce considered in the revolution it had on the world. This is the effect of commerce on the world. This is, in many ways, the, his argument of liberal peace theory. Right? This is the idea. Chapter one, just some general considerations. So commerce is subject of great, uh, to great revolutions. That means, in other words, commerce is always changing, right? Great revolution, uh, uh, you know, uh, a boom and bust, boom and bust, right? Uh, it can happen that a certain physical causes, such as the quantity of terrain or the, uh, or of the climate, fix its nature forever. So wait a minute. So therefore, what is he saying? That the, that even though re there is this revolution in commerce, commerce creates this revolution, that certain physical causes, such as the terrain, nature of terrain, the quality of the terrain, and the climate, fixes its nature but shapes its nature or fixes, that's the word, stabilizes it or changes it? No. Today we engage in commerce with the Indies only through silver we send there. The Romans took about 50 million sesteres there every year. Just as with our silver today, this silver was converted into commodities that then they brought back to the West. All peoples who have traded with the Indies have always taken metals there and brought back commodities, right? This is this idea. They brought up, you know, the, 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 nature herself produces this effect. The Indians have their arts, which are adapted to uh, uh, their manner of living. Our luxury cannot be theirs. Our needs, uh, 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 our, nor our needs, their needs. Uh, uh, their climate requires and permits them to have almost nothing that comes from us. So therefore, they uh, they generally go naked. The land has fur furnished them suitably with the clothes they have and their religion, which has an empire over them, makes repugnant to them the things that serve as food for us, beef, right? You know, you know like, oh, the cow is sick or, or a pig for the Arabs, right? The Muslims, right? Therefore, uh, they need only our metals which are signs of value and for which they give the commodities that their frugality and their nature of their land produce for them in great abundance. The ancient authors who mentioned that the Indies, uh, uh, mentioned the in uh, Indies depict them as we, as we see them today in respect to police, manners, and mores. So who's the Indies of two? Let's look at two. This is uh, Pliny, right? Pliny the Elder. Um, uh, 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 the Indies have been, the Indies will be as they are at present. And in all times, those who deal with the Indies will take their silver and bring back none. And this is interesting. Right? But, okay, what is what, what do they do? What? Education, knowledge. Okay. So that's the big problem, right? So the Indies, the Indies. Um, in India, basically, right? The Indies, right? Uh, chapter two the, on the people of Africa. Most of the people on the coast of Africa are savages and barbarians. I believe this comes largely from there being some uninhabited countries that separate those small countries which can be inhabited. They are without industry, they have no arts, they have precious metals in abundance which they take immediately from the uh, uh, hand of nature. Therefore, our people with a police are in a position to trade advantageously with them. They uh, can make, uh, 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 they can make uh, uh, them have a high regard for things of no value and receive a very high price for them. So therefore the, 
this is the, the coast of Africa, right? This is that, um, and that they have easy access to the metals, and they can do it. They're barbarians. They they have no industry. They have no they have no arts. They have precious metal in abundance, and therefore they make a high price for them. Uh, chapter three: the, uh, that the needs of the people of the south are different from those of the no peoples of the north. So north-south distinctions, right? This kind of balance in Europe between the nations of the south and those of the north. The first have all sorts of the comforts of life and few needs. The second have many needs and few comforts of life. Okay, this is in Europe, this is the north south split. This is the Latin culture. The southern culture, the Mediterranean Latin culture that goes uh, like this, and northern Germanic northern country culture, right? This is the, the Nordic German north south gap in Europe, right? To the former, nature has given much, and they ask but little from it. And to, the, uh, and to the others, nature gives little, and they ask much from it. In other words, in other words they ask much from nature. They demand much of it, right? Equilibrium is maintained by the laziness it has given to the southern nations, and to the industry and activity it has given to those, uh, those of the north. Again, this is a very much an interesting argument. This is kind of a, you know, saying, hey, Weber, you're talking about Protestantism, uh, maybe pro the, the, the Protestant work ethic, maybe it's not so much about the Protestant work ethic, but the climate and the, the difference between the two climates and people, right? The latter are obliged to work hard much, and if they did not, they would lack everything and become barbarians. What has naturalized servitude among the southern peoples is that they can easily do without wealth. They can even do better without liberty. But the northern people need liberty, which produces for them more of the means of satisfying all the needs nature has given them. The northern peoples are, therefore, in a forced state unless they are either, uh, they are in a forced state unless they are either free or barbarians. Almost all of the southern people are in some fashion in violent states, uh, in a violent state, unless they are slaves. Um, now, chapter four. The principal difference between the commerce uh, uh, between the commerce of the ancients and that of today. So the ancients of the north versus that. From time to time, the world meets with situations that change commerce. Today, the commerce of Europe is particularly carried out from north to south. However, the difference in climates make people have a great need for, for each other's commodities. So, for, for example, the large uh, the beverages of the South carried to the North from a kind of commerce scarcely produced, pursued by the ancients. Thus, the capacity of ships, formerly measured by hogsheads of grain, are measured by casks of liquor. And as the ancient commerce that is known to us was from uh, 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 was from one Mediterranean port to another. It was almost entirely in the South, but as peoples of the same climate have almost the same things, they do not need commerce with one another as much as people in, in different climates. Therefore, commerce in Europe was less extensive formerly as it was present. So in other words, he's saying it was present, but it was, in other words, that, uh, that, that you, don't, you, don't, you don't, in other words, the people of the same climates are going to have uh, similar needs and similar wants, similar desires, and therefore the commerce is not going to be, but for people of different climates, what will happen is the needs and the variations and the productions and goods that between them will will increase and there will be a greater need for wants or desires from things. And therefore, uh, uh, hence this is why commerce was less extensive, less, not non-existent, but less extensive, we say. This is not uh, I, I, this uh, this is not in contradiction to what I've said about the commerce of the Indies, right? Um, the difference in climates is so extreme that there it, it, there is no relation between their needs and ours, right? The extreme, the calamity of the the, the, the questions of the Indies, the, the southern northern southern climates, are, there's there's difference, but it's there's greater overlap. Whereas the Indies climate is so radically different from the point of view. Of, uh, of of the European, that it is, there's no it's, it, 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 there's no relation between their needs and our needs. Now, one of the things you have to may, maybe say how will how will climate technology change this? 
how will climate technology, I mean by this air conditioning and, uh, uh, um, and the uh, um, and means of interfering with the ecology to either cool things down or warm things up. In other words, we can do that with air conditioning and things. We can do that within buildings, but also we can kind of do it like in, uh, uh, um, but if you deforest or deep swamp and do things that you can alter, you can alter the, the agriculture place. No, by altering the forest, the dams, the water rise, you can affect the overall climate of the place. Uh, but also you can create the situation where you can do technology, create, uh, you know, you create air conditioning where people can live in places that were before uninhabitable to a great degree, like the South, what the American Southwest, right? Arizona and New Mexico. Chapter five, other differences. Commerce sometimes destroyed by conquerors, sometimes hampered by monarchs, wander across the earth. Again, that's why that metaphor of at, the, uh, that which at the top, right? This is Atlas, the conquered world, the world teaches us that uh, commerce wanders across the earth, flees from where it is oppressed, and remains where it is left uh, uh, to breathe. It rains today where one used to see it only in deserted places, seas, and rocks. There where, uh, where, uh, there where it used to rain are now only dis uh, uh, deserted places. So therefore, this is interesting that, that uh, it's everywhere now. Before, it was only in these kind of rocky places, deserted places, rocks, seas, and rocks. Now we only see deserted places. Today, upon seeing Colchis, which is no more than a vast forest where people who are fewer uh, who are fewer each day defend their liberty only in order to sell themselves one by one to the Turks and the Persians, one would never say that this region has uh, has been at the time of the Romans full of towns whose commerce called all the nations uh, of the world to it. Okay, this is this idea of Colchis region. Um, no record of this can be found in the country. There are no traces of it. Uh, uh, there are traces of it only in Pliny, uh, Pliny and Strabo. The history of commerce is that of communication among people. So therefore communication, this idea of communication, interchange, the exchange. When the communication is exchange information, it's like trade, right? Commerce is trade. Um, uh, exchange. Ex uh, commerce has this idea that there's a uh, there's activity between people. Speak com uh, commerce is this kind of, you know, it, it can mean it, it has a broader concept. Um, its greatest events are formed by the various destructions, and the ebbs and flows of populations and of devastation. So therefore, the, its greatest events are formed by the various destructions, the things that some cases, crises. So something happens, wars, disasters, things, some event, and the certain ebbs and flows of populations and of devastations. Again, this is the famous book, you know, the Her Hercotch's book, The Great Leveler, which talks about how, you know, uh, moments of great equality happens after great disasters, okay, or wars, things like this. So um, this is what he says, that commerce is the communication of all people, you know, it, it's greatest event is formed, what, what happens, the commerce that happens occurs after these mixes of these, they're uh, formed by their various destructions of their economies and their th structures and things. So uh, chapter six on the commerce of the ancients. The immense treasures of Samaris, which could not have been acquired in, in a day, makes us think that the Assyrians themselves had pillaged other wealthy nations as other nations later pillage them. The effects of, uh, the effects of commerce is wealth. The, eff the consequence of wealth, luxury. That of luxury, the perfection of the arts. The arts carried to the point at which they are found at the time of uh, uh, Samaritis indicates to us that a great commerce was already established. There was a great commerce of luxury in the empires of Asia. The history of luxury would be a fine part uh, of the history of commerce. The luxury of the Persians was that of the Medes, and as that of the Medes was of that of the Assyrians. The greatest changes occurred in Asia. The northeastern parts of Persia, Hycrania, 
Margrenia, Bracta, Bractia, Bractia, etc., were formerly full of flourishing towns, which no, which exists no uh, uh, more, and the uh, uh, um, and the north of this empire. It, that is this isthmus separating the Caspian Sea from the Black Sea, which was covered with towns and nations, which are no more. So he's saying that there was a point in time, the ancient world, that this place between the Black Sea and the Caspian were filled with towns, flourishing towns that were there, right? That these And nations, peoples, right? Now seven, this is, again, Pliny, Elmer, and Strabo, right? Who account as well, the, the, the ancient historians. Era, eris, er, at stithes. Let's see, this nine is uh, 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 again plenty of elder, right? Plenty again. And uh, Aristobulus founded in uh, uh, Pat, uh, Patrocles that the com uh, uh, commodities of the Indies went down. Uh, 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 the Onyx into the Black Sea. Marcus Varro tells us that at the time of Pompeii, during the war against the Mithridites, it was learned that it took seven days to go from the Indies to Bac Bactia, uh, Bactitria, Bactria, and thus uh, to the river I I I Icarus, which flows into the o Oxnus. That is the way the commodities of the Indies could cross, uh, could cross across the Caspian Sea to enter into the mouth of Cyrus. That from this river, uh, there was only a five-day journey over land to Pharis, which flowed into the Black Sea. No doubt, the great empire of the Assyrians, the Medes, and the Persians communicated with the most remote parts of the East and West and the West by uh, a way of the nations that populated those various countries. This communication no longer exists. All these countries had been laid waste by the Tartars. Okay, okay. Uh, this, uh, and this destructive nation still lives there and infects them. The Tartars come there. Uh, um, uh, um, and the Tartars invaded, they, they wiped out and exterminated those populations and they kind of remained or, you know, took over them. Right, uh, the, no ox. Uh, the oxus no longer runs in the Carpathian seas. The Tartars diverted it for a particular reason. Um, it disappears into arid sands. Thirteen. Um, um, this is that uh, many changes must have occurred in this country since the time of Ptolemy, Ptolemy who describes so many rivers flowing into the eastern uh, part of the Caspian Sea. The map of uh, uh, the Tsar shows only the river Aristabat in that part, and uh, Bethesda is showing nothing. The map of the Tsar was the map of the Caspian region made by uh, 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 G. A. Haman under the direction of Karl von Verden, and was published in Lipset in the 18th, early 18th century, 1720. Bethesda is, uh, uh, is is Basil uh, Bethesda or uh, 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 Vetis, a Greek cartographer who prepared. Uh, a, a, ma a map of Central Asia, uh, uh, 1732. Okay. And therefore, this is uh, number 13, announces the account of the cruise of the voyage of the Lord, right? Nor okay. Okay. So, therefore, da, da, da. it's the Tartars, right? Um, uh, uh, the Tartars of the river, it goes into spirit. The uh, 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 Jad Arce, the Jacks. Artes, which once formed a barrier between the nation with the police, uh, with the police and the barbarian nations, have been subvert, uh, 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 similarly diverted by Tartars and no longer flows to the sea. So the Tartars, there was this river, right, this Jokse River, Jokse River, that divided the barbarians and the people, the, 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 those towns, those with the police, right, the nations with the police and the barbarians, right. Nations, uh, uh, and this river was too by diverted by the Tartars, which no longer flows to the sea. Uh, Cilicius Nexus formed the project by uh, of joining the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea. This design, which would have made the commerce of that time very easy, vanished with his death. 
or there was tempted to do this, but then he died. No, uh, one does not know whether he could have carried it out in the ism, uh, uh, carried it out in the isthmus that separates the two seas. This country is very little known today. It is depopulated and filled with forests. Water is not lacking there, for an infinity of rivers descend from the Caucasus mountains. But the Caucasus, which forms the north of the isthmus and whose arm reaches to the south, would have been a great obstacle, especially in those times when the art of making locks did, did not yet exist. So there, there's the height of things. You're going to make these two things. You have to go to the, 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 the Caucasus, and there's no, art, there's no art of making locks, which allow you to go up. In other words, the, there's going to be high like, like mountain ridges and things like this. It's hard to make a river like that. You're going to have to have locks to bring up elevations up, right? Okay, it doesn't exist yet. One might believe that uh, Silesius uh, uh, wanted to join the two seas at the very place where C C Caesar, uh, uh, Tsar Peter I, had uh, uh, since done it. That is, on the spot, spit of land where uh, uh, the Tanis is close to the Volga, but uh, 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 but the north of the Ca but but the north of the Caspian Sea had not yet been discovered. While there was a commerce of luxury among the empires of Asia, the Tyrians engaged in an economic commerce around the whole world. Bokart has used the first book of his Canaan to enumerate the colonies they sent to all the countries along the seacoast. They went beyond the pillars of Hercules and set up establishments on the coast of the ocean. So it continues. Uh, they founded Tarsaros and set up the cadets. Cadets. Right? At uh, the, those times, navigators were obliged to follow the coast, which, their, uh, uh, which was their compass, so to speak. Their voyages were long and arduous. The labor, uh, voyage of Ulysses was a futile, a fertile subject for the finest poem in the world, after the one which is the first of all, the Iliad and Odyssey, right? The Iliad is the war with the war, and Odyssey about the trip home, right? The a little known, uh, the little knowledge most people had about those who were far away from their favorite from them favor the nations that engage in economic commerce. So therefore, most people's knowledge of things we did not know, we know people were, those, the, those who engaged in commerce knew. They put what obs, uh, 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 obscurities they wanted into their trading. They had all the advantages of in, in, intelligent nations over ignorant peoples. Egypt removed, removed by its religion and mores from any communication with foreigners, did, scare, uh, did scarcely any commerce abroad. It enjoyed a fertile terrain and an, abund an extreme abundance. It was, the, uh, um, it was the Japan of those times. It was sufficient to itself. So the Egyptians didn't know. It was like Japan, right? Sufficient to itself. The Egyptians were so, uh, je so little jealous of external commerce that they, left, uh, uh, that they left that of the Red Sea to all the small nations that had ports there. They permitted the uh, Idumanians, uh, uh, the Jews, and the Syrians to have fleets there. For this navigation, Solomon employed the Tyrians, who knew the seas. Josephus says that his nation, occupied exclusively, ex occupied exclusively with architecture, knew the sea but little. Thus, the Jews traded on the Red Sea only occasionally. They conquered the Ismidian is town of Elath and Isgarn Gibber, which gave them this commerce. They lost these two towns and this commerce as well. It was not the same with the Phoenicians. They did not, they did not engage in a commerce of luxury. They did not trade as a result of conquest. Their frugality, their ability, their industry, their perils, and their hardships made them necessary to, to all the nations of the world. So therefore, they're, 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 you know, they, 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 they engage. The, in other words, the, the Phoenicians were uh, did not engage because of luxury. 
they, they, they did not trade as a result of conquest. It was their fragility, their ability, their industry, their perils, and their hardship made them necessary to all the nations of the world. So they were the commercial, a massive commercial part of them. The, na uh, the nations neighboring the Red Sea traded only on this sea and on, and on that of Africa. The universal astonishment of Alexander's discovery of the Indian Ocean is sufficient proof of this. As we have said, that precious metals are still carried to India and that none are brought back. The Jewish fleets, which brought back gold and silver through the Red Sea, are returning from Africa and not from the Indies. Okay? I say further, this voyage was made along the east coast of Africa. And the states of uh, the state of sailing at that time is sufficient proof that one did not go uh, to very distant places. I know that the fleet of Solomon and that of uh, Je uh, uh, Jehoshaphat return only in the third year. But I do not see that the length of the voyage proves the greatness of the distance. Pino and Strabo tells us that the route traveled in 20 days by a ship made of rushes in the in the indies or the red sea could be covered uh, could be covered in seven days by a greek or roman ships uh, uh, in other words tw 20 days uh, 20 days by this reed ship and seven days by a greek and roman ship using this proportion a voyage of about one year for the greek or roman fleet was a voyage of about three years for the uh, uh, for Solomon's fleet, two ships of unequal speeds do not make their voyages in time proportional to their speeds. Slowness often produces uh, an even greater slowness when it is a question of following the coast, and when one is constantly on different situations, one must wait for a good wind in order to leave a gulf and have another in order to uh, to set out a ship that is a good uh, a ship that is a good sailors uh, that is a good sailor profits from all the favorable weather while the other one remains a, a, in a difficult spot and waits several days for another change so therefore different type of ships the one the, 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 the Greek ships are better than the uh, Jewish ships the slowness of the Indian ships which in equal time, could go but a third of the distance covered by the Greek and Roman ships, can be explained by what we see today by in our sail. The Indian ships made of rushes drew less water than the Greek and Roman vessels made of wood joined uh, with iron. One, compare, uh, one can compare Indian ships to those of some nations today whose ports are not very deep, such as Venice and even Italy generally the Baltic Sea and the Hall provinces of Holland. Their ships, which have to go in and out of these ports, are built with round, broad bottoms, whereas ships of the nations that have good ports have hulls formed to lie deep in the water. This mechanism makes the latter ship sail closer to the wind and the former sail almost when they have the wind to the stern. A ship that lies deeper in the water is the same uh, in the same direction, in, uh, uh, in other words, sails in the same direction in almost any way. This comes from the resistance of the boat pushed by the wind finds in the water, which gives a gives it a point of support, and from the long wind of the vessel, which presents its side to the wind, while because the ship uh, 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 because the shape of the rudder one turns the prow in the direction one proposes. In this way, one can go, go very close to the wind that is nearly in the direction from which the wind comes. But when the ship is round and broad-bottomed and consequently does not sink deep into the water, there is no point of support. The wind pushes the vessel where, uh, which can neither resist nor scarcely uh, nor go scarcely anywhere but where the wind blows. From this it follows that the wind, cons the vessels constructed with a round bottom are slower in their voyages. One, they lose much of their time waiting for the wind, especially if they're obliged to change direction. Two, they go more slowly because not having the point of support, they cannot carry as 
uh, as many sales as the others. And if, uh, for if at the time when sailing was much improved, at a time when the arts are, com uh, are communicated, at a time when one corrects with art both the defects of nature and the defects of art itself, one feels these differences. What must it have been for, uh, 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 must have been for the sailing uh, of the ancients? I cannot leave this subject. The Indian ships are small, those of the Greeks and Romans, if one accepts those machines made for ostentation, were smaller than ours. These ships, uh, the, the smaller ship is more, the, the smaller the ship, the more it, it is endangered by bad weather. A tempest can sink a ship made only, uh, a, a, a tempest can sink a ship, would only make it roll if it were larger. The, the relation between a large body and a surface is smaller than that of a small body and its surface, from which it follows that a smaller ship has a smaller ratio. That is a greater degree between the surface and the sh of the ship and the weight or load it can carry than the larger one has. One knows uh, that uh, that in the most general practice, a ship takes cargo equal to half the weight of the water it could contain. Let us assume that a ship uh, could hold 800 tons of water. Uh, its, uh, uh, its load would be 400 tons. That of the ship uh, could only hold 400 tons of water would be 200 tons. Thus, the size of the first ship to the weight it would carry would be, uh, be as of eight is to four, and that of the second of, of four is to two. Let us assume that the surface of the large one is the surface of the small one, as six, eight is to six. The surface of the latter, okay, what does surface mean here? 26. That is to compare sizes of the same. The action of pressure on the water or on the boat will, uh, uh, will be uh, to the resistance of the same boat, etc. Right? So this is the metaphor. Uh, uh, to the surface of the latter to its late will be 6 to 2, while the surface of the former to its weight will be uh, as 8 to 4. And with winds and with waves acting only on the surface of each, the larger vessel with its weight will resist their impulses better than the smaller one. Right? This is the so this is again the size of ships, relative size of ships, better deeper ships, the ship ship ships versus deep uh, uh, hull ships versus sm a smaller, uh, uh, um, less deep but rounder bottoms, um, uh, uh, more sails, less sails. All these things, bigger, smaller, um, uh, uh, all those aspects of navigation. This is with the ancients, right? Now, chapter seven on the commerce of the Greeks. Yeah, this is that, that, and that was chapter. That was well, that was the. That, I think that was the. No, no, the longest chapter will be sixteen. Okay, so commerce of the Greek. The first Greeks were all pirates. Minos who had an empire of the sea, was perhaps only more successful bandit. His empire was limited to the en uh, environments of his island. But when the Greeks became a great people, the Athenians gained a true empire on the sea because this commercial and victorious nation gave laws to the most powerful monarchs of that time and crushed the maritime forces of Syria and the island of Cyprus and Phoenicia. I must speak of the Athenian empire on the sea. Athens, says Xenophon, has an empire on the sea, but uh, but as Attica is on land, the enemies r ravage it when it makes expedition to distant places. The principal men permit the, uh, their land to be destroyed and put their goods secure, uh, securely on some island. The populace, which has no lands, lives without work. But if the Athenians lived on an island and had also uh, and had also an empire on the sea, they would have the power to harm others, and no one would be able to harm them, so long as they remain master of the sea. As you, as you might say that Xenophon intended to speak of England. Okay, that's great. That's why, you know, the early, this, is, this also explains why 
Xenophon was really liked at 16, 17, and 18. It is only in the 19th century, uh, uh, okay, the, uh, the 19th century is Xenophon started not to be liked anymore, you know, right? The, the, the decline of Xenophon. Athens filled with projects of glory. Athens, uh, uh, which increased, uh, uh, increased jealousy instead of increasing its influence more att attentive to extending its maritime empire than using it. And with a political government such as the common people distributed the public revenues themselves where all the rich were oppressed, did not engage in a great commerce, uh, did not engage in the great commerce promised it by the works of its minds, the multitude of its slaves, the number of its sailors, its authority over the Greek towns, and more, all, uh, 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 and more than all that, the fine institutions of Sola. Was it, in other words, that it, it had even good laws, right? It's saying. Its trading was limited almost entirely to Greece and the Black Sea, from which it drew its sustenance. Corinth was admirably less uh, uh, well situated. It separated two seas, opened and shut the uh, Peloponnese, and opened and shut Greece. It was a town of great importance in the time when the Greek people were uh, were a world, and Greek towns, nations, right? This is this is so. This is the great Corinth was like the hub of uh, Greece, right? It, uh, it did a great commerce with Athens. It had one port to receive our commodities from Asia. It had another one to receive those of Italy. For as there were great difficulties in going around Cape Midla. In other words, because of the winds, right? There were opposing winds, met uh, meat causing me causing shipwrecks. One preferred to go north to Corinth, where as vessels could even be carried over land from one sea to the other. In no other town were works of art carried so far. In other words, religion complete completed uh, religion completed the corruption of what its opponents had. Left to uh, left of its moors, so the, 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 the opulence destroyed its moors. Religion even it would. It erected a temple to Venus, to whom more than a thousand course, uh, uh, courtesans were dedicated. From this sanctuary, sem, uh, from this seminary, graduated most of the celebrated beauties, whom uh, 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 whose history Athenius uh, 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 dared to write. That's how Athenius dared to write. It seems in the time uh, it, it seems that in the time of Homer, the offense of the Greeks was in Rhodes, Corinth, and Orchomenos. Jupiter, he says, loved the Rhodesians and gave them great wealth. He attached the epithet wealthy to the Corinthians, to Corinth. <clears throat> Similarly, when he wanted to speak of towns having much gold, he cites the Orenachmios. Which he adds to, uh, which he adds to Thebes in Egypt, uh, uh, Rhodes and Corinth uh, uh, preserve uh, perver uh, their power, and Orinacus, uh, uh, Ori, okay, Orc, Orc Hominos, Minos did not. The location of Orc Hominos, close to the Hellespot, pa uh, 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 pro. Pontus and the Black Sea naturally makes one think that it drew its wealth from the commerce on the sea, on on the coast of those seas, which occasioned the story of the Golden Fleece, and indeed the name of Minion is given to Orchomenos and also to the Argonauts. But later, as the sea became better known, the Greeks established a great number of colonists there. And these colonists dealt with the barbarian peoples as they communicated with their mother country. Okominos became began to decline. It disappeared into the crowd of other Greek towns. Before Homer, the Greeks had traded almost only with each other and with some barbarian people, but they extended their dominion gradually as they formed new people. Uh, formed new people. This Greece was a great peninsula whose cape seemed to have made the sea roll back and the gulfs open on all sides as to receive them. If, if one looks at Greece, one will see uh, in a rather compact country a very extensive coastline. Innumerable colonies lay at a wide 
a, a white circle around it. And in them, the Greeks saw, so to speak, everyone who was not a barbarian. Did they penetrate into Sicily and Italy? They formed nations there. They did they sail in towards the Black Sea, towards the coast of Asia Minor, towards those of Africa. They did the same. Their towns became prosperous the closer they were to new peoples. And remarkably, uh, and remarkably, innumerable islands stood as if to make a wall around Greece. What what causes what causes for Greek prosperity were the games it gave, so to speak, to the universe, the temples to which all kings sent offerings, the festivals where people gather from all parts of the world, the oracles, which attracted all human curiosity, finally taste in the arts, which brought to a point uh, uh, that whatever be uh, uh, that whoever believes they have uh, have been surpassed will forever be in ignorance of them. Okay, this is this is that D uh, uh, um, uh, 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 the sentence ends in a question mark in the middle of the text, right? So therefore, this is this is that uh, this idea, this 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 what, what is the great prosperity of Greek? All these things, the the temples, the gods, the the the, uh, uh, the universe uh, uh, to, uh, gave it. The games it gave to, to the, the games, the Olympic games and activities, the sports and activities, the temples that they presented, uh, the festivals that they gathered, and the plays and dramas, or the festivals where the theaters were given, uh, the oracles, which had given curiosity, and finally the tastes, the arts, all the things that they did, like cuisines and arts, uh, and uh, I were brought to a point that whoever believed they have been surpassed would then be in ignorance of them. Now, chapter eight. Um, on Alexander and his conquests. Now, chapter eight is, I think, one of the big ones, right? If I'm correct. Uh, nah, it's not that. It's ten. Um, um, four events occurred uh, under Alexander that produced the great revolution in commerce: uh, the capture of Tyr, the conquest of Egypt, that of the Indies, and discoveries to the Sea of the South of that country, right? So those, these are the four things. This changes created globalization. Uh, Alexander's conquest, uh, uh, conquest of a, a Persia, and this created a global first global revolution, the global economy, trade. The empire of the Persians reached as far as the Indus, long before Alexander Darius had sent out sailors who descended this river and went as far as the Red Sea. How, therefore, could the Greeks have been the first to bring commerce to the Indies from the south? How had the Persians not done this before? Of what use to them were the seas that were so close to them, the seas that bathed the shores of their empire? It was true that Alexander conquered the Indies, but one must conquer a country in order to trade with it. I shall examine them. Do you have to conquer the trade with it? The words is, is, you don't have to conquer it, as we said. Right? The argument is almost no. Um, area, Ariana, which stretched from the Persian Gulf to the uh, 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 to the Indus and from all the southern seas to the mountains of the uh, uh, Peropamios, Isus, was certainly dependent in some way on the Persian Empire, but its southern part was arid, burnt, and uncultivated and barbarian. Tradition says that the armies of Cimmerius uh, 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 and of Cyrus had perished in these deserts, and Alexander, who had his fleet follow him, did not fail to lose a part of his did not fail to lose a large part of his army. The Persians left the whole coast of the Persians left the whole coast in the power of Ichthoyapegai. The Oreti and some other barbarian people. Further, the Persians were not sailors, and their religion itself barred them from any ideas of maritime commerce. Right? That's the voyage that Darius had them make down the Indies and the Indian Sea was the fantasy of a prince who wants to show his power rather than orderly project of a monarch who wants to use it. So, in other words, it was about power, not about commerce. So, Darius going up to the Sea of India. The, the, the Persians were not a commercial people. Their religion barred them, he said. 
didn't have their more their religion and their mores did not encourage them to be a a, 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 a vet. This had no consequence, either for commerce or for sailing. And if one departed, uh, and if one departed from ignorance, it was uh, it was only to return to it shortly, right? Ignorance of the world, they returned to forget about it. Right? The, uh, there was uh, uh, there is more. It was accepted before Alexander's acquisition that the southern part of the Indies was uninhabitable. This followed from a tradition that Samaricus had brought back only 20 men and Cyrus only seven. Alexander entered from the north. His design was to march to the east, but upon finding the southern part full of great nations and towns and rivers, he attempted to conquer it and did so. At that time, he formed the design of uniting the Indies uh, with the West by a maritime commerce, and he and he had united them by the colonies he had established on the land. He had built a fleet on the Hydaspes, descended the, this river, entered the Indus, and sailed into its mouth. He left his army and his fleet at uh, Petela, went himself with some vessels to reconnoiter the sea, remarked the places uh, where he wanted ports, harbors, and arsenals constructed, he returned to Patata, he left his fleet and took the land route in order to help the fleet and receive help from it. The fleet followed uh, the coast from the mouth of the Indus along the shore of the countries of the, uh, 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 the countries of Oyotia and that of the Ico Pathia, Pathagai, Pathagai, yeah, that's a hard world word, Ico Ye Pathagai of uh, 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 the Karn and Karn Karn Anya and of Persia. He he had wells dug and towns built. He prohibited the uh, is uh, Ik Ikthiopagia from living on fish. He wanted the shores of this sea to be inhabited by civilized nations. Uh, 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 Nicaragua's and all one Sikirtus kept the journal of this voyage, which took 10 months. They arrived at Susus. They found Alexander there feasting his army. This conqueror had founded Alexandria with the view of securing Egypt for himself. This was a key for opening it in the very place where the kings, his predecessors, had locked up and he did not and he did not dream of commerce uh, the thought of which would come uh, to him only with the discovery of the indian sea it appeared that even after this discovery he had no new he had no new new views about alexandria he certainly had in general the project of establishing a commerce between the indians and the western part of his empire but he had too little information to be able to form the project of carrying his commerce to Egypt. Had he seen the Indus, had he seen the Nile, but uh, uh, he uh, did not uh, uh, did. Um, but he did not know about the Arabian seas uh, that are uh, are between the two. He had scarcely arrived in the Indies when he he had new fleets built and set sail on the. Uh, uh, Uleus, the Tigris, and the Euphrates, and uh, and the sea. He removed the cataract, uh, 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 cataracts the Persians had put in these rivers. He discovered that the Persian Gulf was a gulf of the ocean, as he set out to explore the sea, in the same way he had explored that of the Indies, as he had a port of a thousand vessels and an arsenal built in Babylon. He sent 500 talents to Phoenicia and Syria in order to attract pilots whom he wanted to settle in the colonies he'd built along the coast. And finally, as he did uh, uh, immense work on the Euphrates and other Assyri Assyrian rivers, one cannot doubt that his design was to engage in commerce with the Indies through Babylon and through the Persian Gulf. Some people, assuming that Alexander wanted to conquer Arabia, have said that he had formed the design of putting the seed of his empire there, but how could he have chosen a place unknown to him? The 
signed, it was the most out of the way country in the world. He would have been separated from his empire. The caliphs who conquered faraway lands left Arabia immediately, immediately in order to establish themselves elsewhere. Chapter 9, on the commerce of the Greek kings after Alexander. When Alexander conquered Egypt, the Red Sea almost unknown. Uh, the Red Sea was almost unknown, and nothing was known of that part of the ocean that joins this sea that bathes the coast of West, the, the, the coast of Africa and the one on the one side and that of Arabia on the other. It was believed that it was impossible to go around the Arabian Peninsula. Those who had tried to go around from each side had abandoned their enterprise. It was said, how could it be possible to sail south from the coast of Arabia as almost the whole army of Cambius uh, perished, <coughs> of course, crossing Arabia from the north? And the army of Ptolemy, son of uh, uh, Lagos, sent uh, 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 to help uh, 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 Silesius Nictor in Babylon uh, suffered un unbelievable ills and could march only at night because of the heat. The Persians had no shipping of any sort. When they conquered, conquered Egypt, they brought them uh, uh, brought with them the same spirit they had at home. Their indifference to sailing was so extreme that the Greek kings found them ignorant not only of ocean voyages, but made by the Tyrians the uh, 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 and made by the Tyrians the, uh, the Idumeans and the Jews, but also even those on the Red Sea. I believe the destruction of the first Tyre by Nebuchadnezzar and that of the several small nations and towns near the Red Sea caused the loss of uh, uh, the knowledge that had been acquired. Uh, Egypt did not reach uh, 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 to the Red Sea at the time of the Persians. It in included only those long strips of land covered by the Nile during its flood and enclosed on each side of the mountain chains. Therefore, the Red Sea had to be discovered a second time and the ocean a second time, too. And this discovery awaited the curiosity of the Greek kings. The Greek kings. In other words, it was, it was under Alexander and the, and the kings that, was, that replaced him, that, uh, that took over regions of the empire, that returned commerce, discovery. The previous Egyptians lost, that, uh, and even the Persians lost knowledge of this thing. The uh, Nile was explored, the elephants were hunted in the country between the Nile and the sea. The shores of this sea were discovered by land, and the discovery was made under the Greeks. The name are Greeks. The temples are dedicated to Greek divinities. The Greeks of Egypt were able to engage in a very extensive commerce. They were the masters of the port of the Red Sea. Tyre, uh, Tyre the rival of every commercial nation, was no, uh, was no longer the Greeks of Egypt were not hampered by that country's ancient superstition, the Egyptian superstition. Egypt had become the center of the universe. In the Indies, the kings of Syria left the commerce of the south to the kings of Egypt um, and pursued only that of the north through the Oxnus and the Caspian Sea. It was believed at that time that the sea was part of the of the of the northern ocean that the and that alexander sometime before his death had built had had a fleet built in order to discover it if it convert uh, uh, connected with the ocean by the black sea or by some other eastern sea uh, uh, towards the indies after him cyclus and uh, antikotkus uh, and Tacticus paid particular attention to its exploration. They stationed fleets there. What Silicus, yeah, his, his, his names, uh, was called the Sea of Silicus. Uh, uh, what uh, 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 Anticulus discovered was called the Sea of Anticulus. While pretending to project, they could undertake a lot. Pretending the projects they could undertake on course, they neglected the southern sea either because the Ptolemies had already gained empires of uh, of them with their fleets on the Red Sea, or because they discovered the unconquerable versions among the Persians, the seafaring. Right? The Persians were not going to be. 
um, along the coast of Persia, did uh, uh, the southern coast of Persia did not furnish sailors. They were uh, 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 they were seen there only at the end of Alexander's life. But the kings of Egypt, masters of uh, uh, of the island of Cyprus and Phoenicia, and a large number of, of places on the coast of Asia Minor, had all sorts of ways of undertaking maritime enterprises. They did not have to constrain the genius of their subjects. They had only to follow them. So that con contrasting the, the Egyptians under the Greeks, the Egyptians under the Greeks, and the Persians, that in, in the problem of the Persians, right? One can scarcely understand the ancient obsten uh, uh, obstinacy in believing that the Caspian Sea was a, a, a part uh, was a part of the ocean. The expedition of Alexander, the kings of Syria, and that of the Par Parthians and the Romans could not alter their thinking. This was because one retracts one errors as slowly as one can. So like what they said, they, the, the people there. So, oh, that's the part of the ocean. Um, at, uh, at first, at first, only the southern part of the Caspian Sea was known. It was taken for an ocean. As uh, one moved north along the shores, one still believed that it was the ocean and extending in, uh, extending inland. By following uh, uh, by, by following the coast, one explored the east only as far as uh, uh, Jaxius and to the west, only to the farther points of Albania. To, uh, uh, the sea to the north was muddy and consequently suited little, uh, little suits navigation. All results of this was that one always saw only the ocean. Alexander's army had gone east only as far as the Hip uh, Hipparius, which is the last of the rivers that flow into the Indies. This uh, the, thus, the first commerce the Greeks had with the Indies was with a very small part of that country. Silius Nectus went as far as the Ganges, and this led to the discovery of the sea into which uh, 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 that river flows, that is, the Gulf of Bengal. Today, lands are discovered by sea voyages, formerly seas were discovered by the conquests of land. Strabo, in spite of the testimony of Apollodorus, appears to doubt that the Greek kings of Bactria went further than uh, uh, Silicus and Alexander. If it is true that they did not go further than uh, uh, Silicus and they went further south, they discover Seeger and the port of Malabar, which occasion navigations for which I am about to speak. Pliny tells us that three successive routes were taken to the Indies. The first one went from the headlands of Saigir uh, uh, to the island of Patula, and that is the mouth of the Indus. It will be remembered that this was the route taken by Alexander's fleet. Then it shortened, uh, 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 and uh, the more secure route was found from the same uh, uh, head, uh, headland to Sagiris. This Sagiris can only be the kingdom of Sagiris that Sarbos mentions, which was discovered by the king, uh, the Greek king Bactia. Pliny uh, could t say that this route was shortened only because it took less time, for uh, Sagiris had to be further from the Indies, Indus, as it was discovered by the king of uh, uh, Bactria. Therefore, this route must have avoided certain coasts and certain winds must have been advantageous. Finally, the merchants took a third route. They went from Cane, uh, uh, Cane to Kela, port suited at the mouth of the Red Sea, from which uh, by a west wind came to the Merizus, the first trading town of the Indies. From uh, there to other ports, one sees that instead of going from the mouth of the Red Sea to, to uh, uh, Saigia, along the coast of the Arabic Felix to the northeast, they went directly from west to east, from the one side to the other by means of the monsoon, who changed, whose changes has been discovered while navigating those latitudes. The ancients left the coast only when they took advantage of the monsoon, or the trade winds, the trade winds, which were a kind of compass for them. Pliny say that they left for the Indies in the middle of the summer and returned towards the end of December and the beginning of January. This corresponds exactly with the journals of our navigators. 
it is the part uh, in the, in the part of the Indies that lies between the peninsula of Africa and this side of the Ganges. There are two monsoons. The first, during which the winds go from west to east, begins in August and ends in September, and the second, when the winds go from east to west, begins in January. Thus, we leave Africa for Malabar at the time of uh, uh, time the fleet of Ptolemy left, and return at the same time. Alexander's fleet took seven months to go to Petula, uh, uh, to, uh, Pet, Petula, to Susa. Susa. Uh, it, it left in the month of July, uh, that is the time when no ships dare, uh, today dares put out uh, to, to return from the Indies. Between the first and the second, between the first and second monsoon, there was a period when the winds vary and when the, a north wind mixed with an ordinary one causes terrible storms, especially along the coast. This lasts through the months of June, July, and August. Alexander's fleet, leaving Pata in the month of July, endured many storms, and the voyages was long because the fleet sailed against the monsoon. Pliny uh, says that they left uh, for the Indies at the end of summer. Thus, they used the interval between the monsoons to travel from Alexandria to the Red Sea. See, I beg you, how navigation gradually improved. If it took two and a half years for Darius to descend the Indus and reach uh, uh, the Red Sea, Alexander's fleet descended the Indus and arrived at Susa ten months later, having sailed three months on the um, Indus and seven in the Indian Sea. Later, uh, uh, the trip from Malabar coast to the Red Sea was made in 40 days. Strabo, Strabo who explains this, their ignorance of, uh, of the countries between the uh, High Paris and the Ganges, says that among the navigators who went from Egypt to the Indies, few went as far as the Ganges. Indeed, one sees that their fleets did not go there. They went with the monsoons from west to east and uh, 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 from the mouth of the Red Sea to the Malabar coast. They stopped at trading towns and did not go around the peninsula, which lies this side of the Ganges, by Cape uh, 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 Comorin and the Coromandelian coast. The plan of navigation of the kings of Egypt and the Romans was to return the same year. So return, take this quickly. Well, I'm not going to go this way, not going to do it. Thus, the commerce of the Greeks and Romans in India was far less extensive than ours. Yet we know the immense commerce that they did, uh, 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 we know of an immense commerce that they did not know. We engage in commerce with all the Indian nations and even do their commerce and navigation for them, right? But they engage in, but they engage in commerce with great ease than we do. And if today we traded only on the coast of uh, uh, Gujarat and Malabar, and if without seeking the southern islands were, we were satisfied with the commodities the islanders would bring us, the Egyptian route would have been would have to be preferred to that of the Cape of Good Hope. Strabo says that trade with the peoples of Taprobeni had uh, was done this way. So people, in other words, Strabo said people with these people they, they were done to the Cape of Good Hope. It was no, but. If, if, but if it wasn't for that great commerce there, we, the, the same route that Alexander's people and Romans took of uh, 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 this, this, this trade winds would be, still be the thing. Long one, huh? Commerce. Um, on sailing in one Africa, we learned the history that from discovery of the compass, there were four attempts to sail on Africa. The Phoenicians, who were first sent by Necro, and then by uh, uh, Eudorix, uh, 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 Eudoxus, flee, fee, fleeing the anger of Ptolemy, Laxus set out from this Red Sea and succeeded. S uh, Setapris under Xerxes and Herno, uh, uh, under Xerxes and Herno, so therefore, so that's for four people, right, who was sent by the Carthaginians, went by way of the pillars of Hercules and failed. So he failed, was first sent by Nacos, um, and, and then by, uh, 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 by Echnos, fleeing the anger of Panamani, uh, uh, 
about the Hashem, but like us feeling this anger, set out to see the Hashem under this, was sent by the, uh, uh, under, uh, uh, under, uh, under Xerxes in Hanno, and the, uh, under Xerxes and Hanno, uh, by one of the, uh, who was sent by the Carthaginians went by okay they, they went by this way and failed these two went by this way and failed this guy was sent out by the Red Sea and succeeded and this one was sent by X so these two first two went by the Red Sea seated and those by this the pillars of Hellas fail the main problem in sailing around Africa was discover uh, 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 of the weather of the Cape of Good Hope uh, um, in other words, the problem was was discover and weather the Cape of Good Hope. The Cape, you know, the, the, why weather means survive, right? The Cape of Good Hope. But if one set out from the Red Sea, this Cape was nearly by half that of the one that went by way of the Mediterranean. So it was easier to go this way than it was to go that way. Okay? The coast from the Red Sea to the Cape is safer than the one from the Cape to the Pillars of Hercules. Those who set out from the Pillars of Hercules to discover the Cape, the compass had to be invented so they could leave the coast of Africa and sail into the vast ocean, either going a, a, a towards the island of St. Helena or towards the coast of Brazil. Therefore, it's quite possible for them to have gone from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean without ever going from the Mediterranean to the Red Sea. Thus, without making this great circuit, from which one could never return. It was more natural to engage in commerce from East Africa by way of the Red Sea and from West Africa by the, the uh, 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 Pillars of Hercules. Um, it was in the Red Sea, the Greek kings of Egypt first discovered the part of African coast that stretches from the bottom of the Gulf where the city of Hiromon is situated to De, uh, 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 Deidre, uh, uh, that is to say, the straits called Bab and Man, Mandeb, Mandeb. From there to the Cape of Aromentum at the entrance to the Black Sea. The coast had not been explored by sailors, and this was clear in what Artindorus Dorit. Uh, 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 Artemidorus tells us that the places along this coast were known, but the distance is unknown. This came from the fact that one had explored these ports one by one rather than uh, by one over land routes without going from one port to the other port. Okay? So they understood, they found by the, the land routes that they discovered the ports. Nothing was known beyond the uh, uh, Proto Montori where the coasts. Of the ocean began, and we learn from Erethen, okay, Erotosthenes and Artenodorus from this from these two people. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the ocean, as we learn from this, the, 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 the Protomori. Um, you know what is that? Is that is like the territory of a? Yeah, it's the high point. The high port of the land, the, the, the coastal area. Thus uh, was uh, the knowledge about the coast of Africa at the time of Strabo, that is, in the time of Augustus. But after Augustus, Rome, the Romans discovered ca uh, Cape Raptum and Cape uh, Prasimus, which Strapos does not mention because they were not yet known. These two names are Roman. Ptolemy, the geographer, lived under Haitian and Antonium Caius. And the author of the uh, 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 Periplus of the uh, Erathian Sea, whoever he was, lived somewhat later. However, the former set the limits uh, of known Africa uh, at Cape Prasino, which is about 14 degrees south latitude. And the author uh, and the author of Periplus set them at Cape Ragnum, which is about 10 degrees south latitude. It appears that the latter took. Uh, uh, him uh, for a uh, letter took for the limit of a place habitually reached in the Patal uh, and Ptolemy, a place one no longer went. Okay, 
what confirms what confirms me in this idea is that the peoples around Parasimus were cannibals. Ptolemy, who tells us a great number of places between the ports of Eromeptum and Cape Ramon, leaves uh, uh, the spaces from Rapunum to the Prasimo completely empty. The great prophets from navigation to the Indies must have led the neglect of African navigation. Finally, the Romans did not navigate regularly on this coast. They had discovered these ports by land and by ships driven there in storms. And just as today, one knows the coast of Africa rather well and the in interior very poorly, the ancients knew the interior rather well and the coast rather poorly. So they were, you know, today we know the coast very well, the, 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 the Romans, uh, the, uh, uh, the ancients knew the opposite, like the interiors, the by land. I, ha I have said that the Phoenicians sent out by Neco and, and uh, Eudoxus under Ptolemy uh, 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 Lacatus had sailed around Africa. These two voyages must have been thought to be fables by, at, at the time of P Ptolemy, the geographer, because he puts below the sin, Sinos Magnus, uh, which is, I believe, the Gulf of uh, Siam, an unknown land which extends from Asia to Africa uh, to border upon Cape Prasim, making only a lake of the Indian Sea. The ancients who explore the Indies from the north and advances eastwards put this unknown land to the south. They made up a place, they made up this place that wasn't there. They didn't know it is assumed it was, right? Why is it chapter two? Is it, this, is, this is must be wrong. Right. Okay. It is a typo here. Chapter 11. Mm -hmm. Carthage and Marseilles. Carthage had a signal right of nations. It had all the foreigners who dealt with Sardinia and beyond it to the pillars of Hercules drowned. Uh, its political right was no less extraordinary. It prohibited the Sardinians from cultivating their land on penalty of death. So Carthage had all foreigners who dealt with Sardinia and lands beyond the pillars drowned. It's, and, 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 and the Sardinians were not allowed to do that. It increased its power by its wealth and subsequently its, its wealth by its power. Masters of the coast of Africa, washed by uh, uh, the Mediterranean, it also reached to the shores of, uh, of the ocean. Hanno, by order of the S uh, Senate of Carthage, distributed 30,000 Carthaginians between the pillars of Hercules and Kern. He says that this place is by, as far as from the pillars of Hercules as the pillars are from Carthage. This positioning is worthy of note. It shows that Hanno limited his establishment of 25 degrees north latitude, that is two or three degrees south of the Canary Islands. Hanno from Kern made another voyage whose purpose was to make discoveries further south. He gained almost no knowledge of the continent. He sailed along the coast for 26 days and obliged to return for lack of food. It appears the Carthaginians made uh, made no use of the uh, of this enterprise of Hanos. Uh, Saclus, Silax, Cy Silax says that the sea is not navigable by Ankara because of its shallow, full of silt and sea plants. Actually, they are thick in this section of the ocean. Actually, they are they are thick in this section. Carthaginian merchants of whom Silex speaks may have found obstacles that Hanno, which 60 ships of, of 50 oars each, had surmounted. Difficulties are relative, and moreover, one should not confuse an enterprise whose object is boldness and fearlessness with one that's result in ordinary conduct. So in other words, the other kid, they went, oh my God, I can't go further. He went further because of his, Hanno was there because of the boldness and uh, uh, fearlessness, right? Hanno's account is is a fine bit of antiquity. The man who performed it wrote about it. He put no ostentation in his narrative. The great captains write with simplicity about their actions because their glory comes from what they have done than from what they have said. His subject, his subject is like his style. He does not tend to the marvelous. He says 
all that he says of those climates and terrains and moors and manners of the inhabitants relate to the one we uh, uh, one today sees today on the coast of Africa. It it, uh, it seems to be the journal of one of our own sailors. Hanno observed from his fleet during the day a vast silence reigned over the continent. That during the night one heard th sounds of marvelous musical instruments, and that one saw fires everywhere, some large, some small. Our accounts confirm this. It has been found that the savages stay in the forest in daytime in order to avoid the heat of the sun, and that at night make large fires to keep away the wild beasts, and they passionately love dancing and musical instruments. <laughs> Ooh, stereotype, don't we? Yeah, I hear you. We're in Africa, right? Uh, Hanno describes the volcano displaying um, uh, a phenomenon uh, uh, distusius to shows today, and his account of two hairy women who preferred to be killed than to follow the Carthaginians, and whose skins he took to Carthage, is not, in spite of what has been said, altogether unlikely. This account is all the more precious because it is a Punic record, and because it is a Punic record, it has been regarded as a legend. For the Romans preserved their hatred of the Carthaginians even after destroying them. But if, but it was only their victory that determined whether one would say Punic faith or Roman faith, right? Punic faith or Roman. It was only their victory that determined whether one would say Punic faith or Roman faith. Some moderns have continued uh, uh, this prejudice. What uh, uh, has become, they ask, of the towns of Hanos described to us, of which even in the time of Pliny there is made no vestige. It would uh, have been a marvel if they had remained. Was it Corinth or Athens that Hanno was going to build on these shores? Corinth, was it that? He left Carthaginian families locations suitable for commerce and made them secure from the savage men and wild beasts. The calamities of the Carthaginians put an end to the navigation around Africa. These families surely must have perished or become savage. I say further, if the towns of the ruins of these towns still remain, who would have gone to discover them in the woods and marshes? One finds, however, in uh, Silax and Polybius, that the Carthaginians had great establishments on those shores. Here are the vestiges of the town of Hanno. There are no others because uh, uh, there are any, there are hardly any other than Carthage itself. The Carthaginians were on the path, were on the path to wealth, and they had gone uh, to four degrees north latitude and fifteen degree longitude. They would have discovered the Gold Coast and the neighboring coast. They would have engaged in a commerce there of a importance quite different from that of the pro slightly like, when it, when america seemed to have deprived the wealth of all the other countries the gold, right? they would have found treasures that could not have been taken away by the romans in other words, this, 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 this. In other words they could have had the gold wealth and powers of people and slave. surprising things have been said about the wealth of spain if one believes Aristotle, the Phoenicians who had landed in Tartarus found it so much silver there that their ships could not hold it. And they had their most common utensils made of this metal. The Carthaginians, according to the reports of uh, Diodorus, 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 found so much gold and silver in the Pyrenees that they put it on the anchors of their ships. One must not rely on these popular accounts. Here are some precise facts. One sees in the fragments of Polybius, cited by Strabo, that the silver mines, which uh, were the source of, uh, 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 of the Bratis, where 40,000 men were employed, gave the Roman people 25,000 drachma a day. That is 5 million livre a, a year in frank, a frank, 50, in, at 50 francs a mark. Uh, the uh, uh, mountains uh, uh, where uh, these mines 
were founded were called the Silver Mountains, which shows uh, that it was the Pots, uh, uh, Potasai, uh, it was the Potasai of its time. Uh, today, the mines of Hanover do not have the quarter of the workers that were employed in those of Spain, and they produce more. But the Romans had most of uh, had almost only copper mines and few silver mines, and the Greeks knew only of very pure mines in Attica. They must have been astonished by the abundance of the uh, of the Spanish mines. In the War of the Spanish Succession, a man called Machias Rhodes, with from whom it was said that it was said that he had been ruined by gold mines and made wealthy by poorhouses, proposed to the court of France to open mines in the Pyrenees. He cited the Tiri and the Carthaginians and Romans. He, permitted, uh, he was permitted to search. He sought, dug everywhere. He continued to cite them, but he found nothing. The Carthaginians, the masters of gold and uh, masters of the commerce in gold and silver, also wanted to be masters of commerce in lead and tin. These metals were conveyed over land from the ports of Gaul, on whose uh, on the ocean to those of the Mediterranean. The Carthaginians wanted to receive them themselves. They sent Himo, uh, Himo, um, Himoko to form establishments on the uh, Caristidian Islands which are believed to be the, the, Sicil, uh, the Sicil Islands. These voyages from Baca to, uh, 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 from Bactia to England may have made some people think that the Carthaginians had compasses, but it was clear they had followed the coast. I need no other proof than the comment of Him, uh, 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 Himoko, who took four months to go to the mouth of the Bracchus to England. In addition, the famous story of the Carthaginian pilot who, on seeing Roman vessels approach, ran aground in order not to let him know the route to England, shows that these vessels were very near the coast when they met. The ancients uh, uh, um, the ancients may have made sea voyages, which would suggest they had compasses, although they had none. If the pilot was far from the coast and there was a quiet time during the voyage, he, if at night he could see the North Star and in the daytime the rising and setting sun, it is clear that he could have guided himself as one does today by a com compass. But this would be a fortuitous event and not a regular voyage. One can see in the treaty which ended the First Punic War that the Carthage, Carthage was principally concerned with preserving its empire of the sea. Rome with preserving that of the land. Hanno declared in the negotiations with the Romans that he would not suffer them to wash their hands at the Sea of Sicily. They were not permitted to navigate beyond the Promorium uh, 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 Pilicium. Yeah, this is going to be Roman. Beautiful cave, right? beautiful cave. They were prohibited from trading in Sicily, uh, Sardinia, and Africa except in Carthage. This exception shows no advantage, advantageous commerce awaiting them there. In the earliest times, there were great wars between Carthage and Marseilles over fishing grounds. After the peace, they uh, 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 after the peace, they both engaged in com uh, economic commerce. Marseilles was more jealous because while echoing its rival while equaling its rival industry, it had become inferior in power. This is the reason for its great faithfulness to the Romans, or Marseilles had become. And the war of the Romans waged against Carthaginians in Spain was a source of wealth for Marseilles, which served as their storehouses. The ruin of Carthage and Corinth increased the glory of Marseilles. 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 Um, and if it had not been for the civil wars in which one had blindly, uh, one had to blindly choose a party, it would have been it would have been happy under the protections of the Romans, who were not jealous of its commerce. Romans didn't really care for commerce; they, just, they liked this wealth that it gave them and access to it. it was not. Chapter Twelve: The Island of Delos and uh, Mithridates. When Corinth was destroyed by the Romans, the merchants withdrew to Delos. 
because uh, because of religion and the people's veneration, this island was regarded as a secure place. Moreover, it was well situated for commerce with Italy and Asia, um, which had become more important after the destruction of Africa uh, uh, and the weakening of Greeks and the destruction of Carthage. Right, as we have said, the Greek sent colonies to the uh, uh, proto uh, pro Pontus and to the Black Sea from the earliest times. These colonies preserved their laws and their liberties under the Persians. Alexander moved only against the barbarians and attacked them. He, de he does not seem to, uh, uh, does not even seem, and it does not even seem that the kings of Pontinus, who occupy many of them, took away their political government. The powers of these kings increased as soon as they had subdued these, these colonies. Mithridates was in the position to buy troops everywhere to repair his losses continuously, to have workers, vessels, and machines of war to produce allies for himself, to, to corrupt those of the Romans and even and even the Romans to, to hire as mercenaries. The barbarians of Asia and, uh, 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 and even the Romans to hire mercenaries, the barbarians of Asia and Egypt, to wage war for a long time and to consequently just to dis discipline his troops. He was able to arm them, to instruct them, in the art, uh, the military arts of the Romans, and to form units. This is again uh, um, Mithridates, right? And to form units of considerable size, uh, uh, size from the the deserts. Finally, he was able to sustain great losses and suffer great setbacks without being ruined. He would not have been ruined if the voluptuousness uh, and barbaric king had not destroyed. Uh, destroyed during prosperity what the great prince had done during adversity, right? So as he would have, if, 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 if he, in other words, he destroyed him uh, uh, um, voluptuous, in other words, had been ruined by, in the voluptuous barbaric king, had not destroyed in prosperity what the great prince had done during his adversity. Right? Thus, at the time when the Romans were at the height of their greatness and seemed to have nothing to fear but themselves, Mithridates challenged what had been decided by the capture of Carthage, and by the defeats of Philip and Antiochus and Perseus. Never was uh, never was war more deadly. And as the two parties each had great power, alternating uh, uh, and alternating greatness, the peoples of Greece and Asia destroyed, either as friends of Mithridates or his enemies. Delius was overrun by the common misfortune. Commerce completely collapsed. It had it, it, it had to meet with destruction as peoples uh, as peoples were destroyed. So common, if the commerce was destroyed when peoples are destroyed. The Romans who followed a system of which I have spoken elsewhere. Uh, consideration of the Romans, right? This book on Romans. Acted as destroyers in, in order not to appear as conquerors. <laughs> they destroyed, wrecked Carthage and Corinth, and perhaps they would have been, that they would have been destroyed by such a practice if they had not conquered the whole earth. When the king of uh, uh, Pontus made themselves master of the Greek colonies in the Black Sea, they took care not to destroy that which was uh, to be the cause of their greatness. So the Romans destroyed things that, not to prove they conquered them, right? <laughs> but they only, and they probably would have been destroyed by it, he says, had not they conquered everything. The kings of Pontinus, and they conquered, they, they, they took the blacks, the, the Greek colonies of that sea, didn't destroy them, they used them for their greatness, right? Chapter 13 on the genius of the Romans for sailing. The Romans cared only for land troops. Whose spirit made them uh, stand firm and uh, uh, stand ever firm, fight in one place and die there. They did not assume the practice of seafaring peoples who offer themselves for combat, withdraw, return, always evading danger, employing stratagems and, and, uh, and rarely force. This was not part of uh, this was not part of the genius of the Greeks. Still less that of the Romans. In other words. Uh, as Plato observed in Book Four of the Laws, and there was this strategy of this. Therefore, they uh, were destined for sailing only those whose means were not considerable enough to give them a place in the legions. Ordinary, the seamen were freedmen, 
So therefore, they didn't. Own, anyone could be going the legions. Uh, they were not they were given place in legions. Ordinary, the freemen were freedmen. Today, we do not have the same esteem for land troops, or the same scorn for those of the sea. Among the first, art among the first, art has diminished, and among the second, it has increased. Now, one seems a, 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 one esteems a thing in proportion to the degree of competence required to do it. In other words, seas require more competence than art. Now, the first, in other, words, in other words, this is the Romans again. And now, chapter fourteen on the genius of the Romans for commerce. The Romans were never noted for, uh, noted for jealousy over commerce. It was as a rival nation and not a commercial nation that they attacked Carthage. They favored the towns that engaged in commerce, though these were uh, though these were not subject towns. Thus, they increased the power of uh, 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 Marseilles by the sensate, uh, uh, cession of many countries to it. They feared everything from the barbarians and nothing from the trading people. Moreover, their genius, uh, uh, their glory, their military education, their form of government drew them away from commerce. And the towns uh, 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 they were occupied only with war, election, intrigues, and t lawsuits. In the countryside with agriculture and the provinces, a harsh and tyrannical government was inc incompatible with commerce. But if their political constitution was opposed to commerce, their right of nations found it no less repugnant. Those people, in other words, those people, said the jurist Pompilus, with whom we have neither friendship nor hospitality nor alliance, are not our enemies. Nevertheless, if things that belong to us fall into their hands, they are its owners. Become uh, freedmen become their slaves, their uh, uh, slaves and uh, they are on the same terms in regard to us. So um, uh, their selves, so become their selves or slaves, as as L V E S S L. I think that's a typo. Um, in other words, uh, uh, the, 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 this idea of reckon that, that the, the, the right of nations is kind of like, okay, we can still do commerce with them. They, their property, we respect their property, right? Their civil rights was, was no less repressive. The laws of Constantine, after declaring the children of mean people who had married persons of a higher condition to be bastards, make no distinctions between women who have a shop for commodities and slaves, right? This idea that they're slaves, right? Those who become commerce of this. And tavern keepers, women of the theater, and daughters of a man who keeps a house of prostitution, or uh, uh, one who has been condemned to fight in the arena. This came down from the ancient Roman institutions. So they're this, they, don't, they don't respect commerce. They don't respect commerce as this. I know well that people filled with two ideas, the one of commerce is the most useful thing in the world, uh, 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 in the world to a state, and the other that the Romans had the best uh, police in the world. Um, that the commerce and the others, the Romans, uh, uh, um, and, and other and the others, people with two ideas. The one of commerce is the most be uh, useful thing in the world, and the others. Th that the Romans had the best police in the world, had believed, uh, have believed that the Romans, uh, okay, uh, and the others that the Romans had the best police in the world, had believed that the Romans greatly encouraged and honored commerce. But in truth, it is that they rarely thought about it, right? They never thought about it. They didn't care about it. They had no regard for it, no respect for it. They tolerated, they respected property, but they're not going to, they don't, they don't, they don't think it's worthy or no will do, right? Chapter 15. The commerce of, uh, 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 of the Romans with the barbarians. The Romans made a vast empire of Europe, Asia, and Africa. The weakness of the peoples and the tyrannies of, of the command united all the parts of this immense body. Then Roman policy was to, be, uh, was to be separate from all the nations that had not yet been subjected. Fear of giving them the arts of conquering led the Romans to neglect the art of entrenching themselves. They made uh, laws to halt commerce with barbarians. Let, uh, uh, let no one say uh, uh, Valens and Gerati and 
send wine, oil, or other liquors to barbarians, or for, or even for them to taste. Let no one carry gold to them. See and see that even what they have of it is cle cle cleverly taken away. Added uh, Gracius Valentinian and Theotodus. The transports of iron was prohibited in penalty of death. Domitian, a timid prince, uh, had uh, the grape vines uprooted in Gaul from the fear, doubtless, that wine might attract the, barbar attract the barbarians, as ha it had formerly attracted it to Italy. Uh, 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 Probius and Julian, who never feared the barbarians, replanted the vines. I know very well when the empire became weak, the barbarians obliged the Romans to establish trade centers and engage in commerce with them. This proves that commerce was not part of the Roman spirit, so it was weak. It was strong, it stopped commerce, tried to stop. Uh, chapter 16, on the commerce of the Romans with Arabia and the Indies. Trade with Ar Ar Arabia Felix and trade with the Indies were uh, uh, the two branches and almost all the branches of their external commerce. The Arabs had great wealth, they drew it from their sea and their forests, and as they brought little and sold much, they drew to themselves the gold and silver of their neighbors. Augustus knew their opulence and resolved to have them either for friends or for enemies. He sent out uh, Aeneas Gallus from Egypt to Arabia. Gallus found the people idle, quiet, and one warlike. He fought battles, siege, uh, staged sieges, and lost only seven soldiers. But the periphery of his guides and the marching climate, along with the hunger, thirst, and sickness, and ill-chosen majors made him lose his army. He had, therefore, to be content with trade with the Arabs, as with uh, other peoples had, and, and, the, and, and, and that is to bring them gold and silver for their commodities. Commerce continues with them in the same manner today. The caravans of Aleppo and the royal vessels of Sirius take Suez take immense sums there. Nature destined the Arabs to commerce. She is not in, uh, She had not destined them for war. But these, uh, but when these tranquil people found themselves between the Parthians and the Romans, they became auxiliaries to both. Elias Gillis found them a commercial people. Muhammad found them warriors. He gave them enthusiasm. They became conquerors. Right? The Arabs gave enthusiasm and the conquerors. They were commercial people. The Romans did not, uh, did, did, did cons cons um, um, considerable commerce in, this, that's first the Arabs, right? Now the Indian, Indies, and Sabro, uh, uh, did commerce with the in in Indies. Sabros learned uh, uh, in Egypt that the Romans employed uh, 120 ships in that commerce. It was still sustained and it was still sustained only by their silver. They sent 50 million sesterces there each year, every year. Pliny says that the commerce, commodities they brought back were sold in Rome at 100 times the cost. I believe he speaks too general. If, the, if, if this profit was made once, everyone will want to make it, and from then on, no one will make it. One can inquire whether it was to the Romans' advantage to engage in commerce with Arabia or the with Arabia and the Indies. Was it, was it in their advantage? They had to send their silver there and they did not have to, um, and they did not have as we do the resources of America which which replaces what they sent. I was persuaded that one of the reasons for the increase in the numerary values of their money was that the establishment of copper and nickel coinage was uh, the scarcity of silver caused by the continual transport to, in, to the Indies. For, uh, for if the goods of this country were sold in Rome at hundreds times their cost, the profit of the Romans were made from the fortunes themselves and did not uh, uh, enrich the empire, did not enrich the empire. The Romans had uh, made, uh, Romans was made from Romans themselves and did not enrich the empire. One will be able to say on the one hand that this commerce produced a great navigation for the Romans, that it is great power. That, the, that new commodities increased internal commerce, favored the arts, supported, in, supported industry, that the number of citizens increased in proportion to the new means for making a living, that this commerce produced luxury, and, which we have pr proved to be favorable to the government of one alone, as it is fatal to that of many. 
in other words, product luxury, lu lu luxury, which is proof favorable, in other words, produce luxury, which is favorable to government of one alone and fatal to that of many, right? That this establishment dated from the fall of their republic, that the luxury of Rome was necessary, and that of and that, and that a town that attracted all the wealth of the universe had to pay uh, uh, for that wealth with her luxury. Strabo says that the Roman Romans commerce with the in, Indies was more considerable than that of the kings of Egypt. And it was singular that the Romans who knew little about commerce paid more attention to commerce with the Indies than did the kings of Egypt who had who had it, so to speak, in their noses? In other words, they, had, they, had, they were they were they were people of commerce. This must be explained. After the death of Alexander, the king of Egypt established a maritime commercial commerce with the Indies, and the kings of Syria, who held the easternmost provinces of the empire and consequently with Indians, maintained the commerce both by land and river. Uh, uh, we have mentioned in chapter six, which was made easier by the establishment of the Macedonian colonies. The result was that Europe communicated with Indies both by the way of Egypt and by the way the king of Syria. The dismemberment of the king of Syria, which, from which the kingdom of Bactria was formed, did no harm to this commerce. Uh, uh, Marinus the Tyrian, who uh, is cited by Ptolemy, speaks of the discoveries made by the Indies by some Mac Macedonian merchants, discoveries made in the Indies by some Macedonian merchants. Discoveries not made by the expeditions of the kings were made by these merchants. We see in Ptolemy that the, uh, that they went from this uh, stone tower in Syria, uh, Sarah, uh, uh, and their discovery of a market town so distant situated in the east and north part of China was a, was a kind of wonder. Thus, under the king of Syria and of Bactria, commodities from southern India passed by way of Indus and Oxus into the Caspian Sea to the west, and those, uh, uh, and those of the more easterly and northerly regions was carried from Syria, the Stone Tower, and the other market towns to the Euphrates. These merchants followed a route that lay along 40 degrees north latitude through the country situated in western China, which which had more of a police than than than, uh, than than today because the Tartars had not yet tainted them. Why now, why the empire of Syria was expanding in its commerce so greatly over land, Egypt did not increase its maritime commerce. The Parthians appeared and founded their empire. And when Egypt fell under Roman rule, this empire was at its full force and its full extent. The Romans and the Parthians were two rival powers who fought, not to know which of them, uh, uh, not to know uh, uh, which of them should reign, but which should exist. Uninhabited areas formed between the two empires. One always went armed between the empires, for uh, 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 from there being commerce, there was not even communication. Ambition, jealousy, religion, hatred, and wars complete, completed the separation. Thus, commerce between East and West, which had followed several roads, now followed only one, and that Alexandria had become on, the only market town. It grew. So, therefore, what happened was the okay the rise of the Parthians, the Parthians, which then caused the problem. They Roman they would oppose each other. They hate each other. Uh, they would one want to exterminate the other. And what happened was that this made the region in there no, 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 not only uninhabitable, and that not even communication was possible. No, and the northern trade routes from the north this way ceased, and then only Alexis through, through Egypt. I shall say but a word about internal commerce. Its principal branch was the grain that was ordered for the sustenance of the Roman people. This was more a concern of the police than the object of commerce, the brain, internal commerce. The police can in, in these circumstances, sailors received certain privileges because of health of the empire depended upon their vigilance, their care for this and this. The health of the empire, the grain was important, therefore this, and therefore the, it was more care was given. Chapter 17, on the commerce after the destructions of the Romans in the West. The Roman Empire was, uh, empire was invaded and one of the effects of the general calamity was the destruction of commerce. The barbarians regarded it 
at first as only as an object for their banditry. And when they established themselves, they honored it no more than they did um, uh, our culture and the other professions of vanquished people. They did not do it. Soon, as, uh, uh, soon there was almost no more commerce in Europe. The nobility who reigned everywhere did not trouble uh, themselves with it. The nobility did not do this, no commerce. The laws of the Viscar permitted individuals to occupy half uh, the bed on the great rivers, provided the other half remained free for nets and boats. There must not have been much commerce in the country they encountered. It was uh, at the time, at the time, the senseless right of ex uh, exactus, exactitage, and sipret. Is this word ex ex stack and shipwrecks were established? Who was something happened? To, something happened? Things falling off the ship or something? And shipwreck. Where the men thought that. As foreigners were not united with them by any communication other than civil right, they did not owe them. Uh, they did not own them. Or owe them. On the other hand, justice of any sort. Uh, on the one hand, justice of any sort, or on the other, pity of any sort. Right? Given the narrow bonds within which the northern people lived, everything was foreign to them. Given their poverty, everything was an object of wealth to them. Established before their conquest on the shores of a, a sea um, of a sea confined full of reefs, they drew profits from the reefs themselves. So therefore, this is, but the Romans, who made laws for the whole universe, had made every uh, very human ones concerning shipwrecks. They restrained uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, they restrained in that regard the banditry of those who inhabited the coasts and furthermore restrained uh, uh, their rapacious uh, uh, fix of the financial people, the, the people who collect money. So Roman law, Roman commerce, Roman rights of nations were much better than the Viscos in that sense. They, they, just, they, they despised commerce. They didn't care about right. They saw, they saw shipwrecks and they said, oh, just take it mine. Okay. Um, Chapter 18, a particular regulation. A law of the Viscoffs, however, had a provision of favorable commerce. It ordered that the merchants who came uh, from across the sea would be judged by the laws and the judges of their own nation when differences sprang up above them. So uh, this was found on the usage established among all these combinations of people, that each man should live under his own laws, something which I discuss at, uh, will discuss later at length. And this is M. Uh, this is book twenty-eight. This is book, will be book twenty-eight. Uh, it was under their own laws. Um, now this is this. this the, the, the Garth had this idea: they live under their own laws. Therefore, they came over here over the sea. Well, we're going to let you be governed in a dispute by your laws. Okay. Interesting. Uh, chapter nineteen on the commerce after weakening of the Romans in the east. Mahat the Mahatmans appeared conquered, and were divided. Egypt had its own sovereign, it continued to engage in commerce with the Indies, masters of good of that country. It attracted the wealth of all the others. The sultans were the most powerful princes of those times. One can see in history how, with the constant and well-managed force, they checked the ardor, fire, and impacity of the crusaders. So therefore the commerce, this, and the, the sultans had wealth in there. In other words, once the, the uh, uh, Constantinople fell, then what happened and the Romans in the East lost their East, lost the con not only Kosovo, but the Eastern of the East, but the, the Mohammedans got that in 600, remember 600, 700, 800 AD, in that sense, right? And then the, 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 uh, they did. Chapter 20, how commerce in Europe perpetuated, uh, how the commerce in Europe perpetuated barbarism. When the philosophy of Aristotle was thought, brought to the West, the shrewd minds who are, who are the great minds in the time of ignorance found it very agreeable. The schoolmen were infatuated with it and took uh, uh, from this philosopher 
many explanations on lending and int at interest. Whereas it's very, uh, uh, whereas its very natural source was the gospel, they co uh, 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 commend uh, they commended it without distinction, and in every case, thus commerce, which was the profession only of mean people, also became that of dishonest people. For whenever one prohibits a thing that is naturally prefer, uh, permitted or necessary, one only makes dishonest the people who, who do it. Commerce passed to a nation covered with infamy, okay. and soon it was no longer distinguished from the most horrible usuries, from monopolies, from the levies of subsidies, and from all the dishonest means of acquiring silver. The Jews, who were made wealthy by their extractions, were pillaged with the same tyranny of it by the prince, tyrant, same tyranny by the princes, made that uh, a thing that can consult the people and that did not relieve them. What happened, what happened in England will give an idea of what was done in other countries. When King John imprisoned the Jews in order to have their goods, there were few who did not have at least an eye put out. Thus did, not, did, uh, thus did this king conduct his chamber of justice. A Jew who had not seven teeth, uh, the Jew who had had seven teeth pulled out, one each day, gave 10,000 silvers marks on the eighth. From Aaron, a Jew of York, Henry III got 14,000 marks of silver and 10,000 for a queen. In these times, one did violently in what, uh, what is done in Poland today with some measure. Okay. Uh, as the kings were not able to search into the pockets of their subjects because of their privilege, they tortured Jews who were not regarded as citizens. Finally, the custom was induced of confiscating the goods of the Jews who were who embraced Christianity. This is, uh, 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 we know of this outlandish custom from the laws abrogating, abrogating it, stopping it. Right? Yeah, one thirty nine. Um, uh, uh, addictive, uh, uh, the addictive in a, uh, uh, bevel, April 4, uh, 1312, right? The reasons given for it is very empty, the given for it have been very empty. It has been said that one wanted to test them and to make nothing remain of their enslavement, to uh, uh, remain to, of their enslavement to the devil. But it is clear that this confiscation was a kind of right of amortization. Writing off costs, right? The action, the process of writing off costs of an asset, right? Uh, uh, of the taxes which the, uh, the prince or the lords levied on the Jews and which they were denied when latter embraced Christianity. So they, in other words, they, is it, this is the thing we tax you for this. So therefore, in other words, well, if I become a Christian, I don't pay the taxes. Maybe. So they said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, therefore I'm going to, what? I don't trust you, I'm going to do these, uh, uh, I'm going to confiscate your property because you, you know, I don't trust your conversion. Uh, in other words, this is the, the, uh, 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 with the Moreno, right? This, this, this is part the, the Spaniards did, right? Uh, or information on taxes. In those times, men were regarded as lands, right? I did people would uh, And I shall know in passing how much one toyed. In other words, you know, people were, men were regarded as lands, the body and the land, land and the body, right? Uh, and I shall know in passing how much one ha has toyed with the notion from one century to another. Their goods were confiscated when they wanted to be Christians, and as soon and soon afterwards they were burned when they did not want to be Christians. <laughs> Nevertheless, one saw commerce leave this seed of harassment and despair. The Jews, prescribed by each country in turn, found the means for saving their effects. In that way, they managed to fix their refuge forever. A prince who wanted very much to be rid of them would not, for all that, be in the humor to be rid of their silver. They invented the letter of exchange, right? This is 
It was known under Philip Augustus and Philip the Tale, the Jews driven out of France took refuge in Lombardy, and they were given, uh, uh, gave the foreign traders and travels, uh, travel secret letters for those whom had entrusted their effects in France and were paid the debts. So this is the letters of commerce, letters of, letters of exchange. And in this way, commerce was able to avoid violence and maintain itself everywhere. For the richest uh, uh, traders had only had only invisible goods, which could be set everywhere and could leave no trace anywhere. So therefore, letters of, they, the Jews invented Jews and invented letters and the religious orders are the same thing, letters of exchange. This became the basis for large commerce. But you, you didn't have to bring along the silver with you anymore, right? Theologians were obliged to curb their principles in commerce, which had been violently linked to bad faith, return it, so to speak, to the bosom of antiquity. So that it, you, had, you know, you had to have change. Like, okay, we made it, we took the Aristotelianism or the Greek distrust of commerce. Now we have to kind of like make it better, make it, bring it back to integrity because of, uh, of this. Thus the speculations of the schoolmen, we all, all the, uh, thus to the speculations of the schoolmen, we all, all the, Misfortunes. Uh, see the law, uh, corpus of law, law novellus, in which uh, uh, the laws of Basil and his father, and the laws of Basil is uh, in the hair of Habursus. In other words, this is this is this um, that accompanied with the destruction of commerce, and to the uh, avarice of princes we owe the establishment of a device that puts it always. Uh, put uh, 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 to the we owe the avarice uh, uh, avarice of princes. We owe the, the establishment of a device that puts it in a way out of their power. So the creation of the letter of credit by creating creating this I means of the letter of credit, the letter of credit and promissory notes, and the means by which we take it out, out take the thing out of this. Right. Uh, the, since the time since that time, princes have have had to govern themselves more wisely than they uh, 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 themselves would have thought. For it turned out that the great acts of authority were so clumsy that expertise itself had made known what only goodness of government brings, that goodness of government brings prosperity. One had, in other words, one had begun to be cured of Machiavellianism this is that we admire, right? The cured of market. One had, one had begun to be cured of Machiavellianism. But if it's a, this, this is a weird line. Machiavellianism is considered a bad thing, right? And one will continue to be cured of it. The commerce, right? This idea. There must, there must be more moderation in councils. What were formerly called coup d'etats would, at present, apart from their horrors, be only imprudences. In other words. What was called coup d'etats at present, apart from their horror, apart from their horror, would, would be imprudences. Um, and happily, men are in the situation, are in a situation such that though their passions inspire in the thought of being wicked, they nevertheless have the interest of not being so. So that, in other words, the situation men are—they have the, the thoughts of being wicked, but their their interests. Now this is. Their interests force them not to be wicked. In other words, um, it's not that virtue is so great, but that our calculation is more of it. Our interests control us, right? Um, chapter 21. Um, the discovery of the two worlds in the state of Europe, this regard. The compass opened the universe, so to speak. Discovery was made in Asia and Africa to which uh, only some coasts had been known, and that of America, which had a completely unknown. The Port Portuguese sailing uh, the Atlantic Ocean discovered uh, the southern tip of Africa. They saw a vast sea. They carried them to the East Indies. The, their, uh, their peril on this sea and the discovery of Mozambique, Melilla, and Calcut, uh, uh, Calicut were, um, were sung by uh, uh, de Camorinus, in which, uh, uh, in whose poetry one feels something of the charms of the Odyssey, uh, Odyssey, and the magnificence of the Aeneid. So, uh, until the, uh, this this voyage, this uh, uh, 
whose poetry they feel the charms of both, the charms of the Odyssey and the magnificent, the grand thing of this is this, this sea adventure. Until then, the Venetians had engaged in commerce with the Indians through the countries of the Turks and had pursued it in the midst of the insults and outrages, right? The Venetians did it through the Turks. By the discovery of the Cape of Good Hope, they had other discoveries made soon after. Italy was no longer the center of the commercial world. It was the corner of the universe, so to speak, and it remains there today. So the commerce of the Levant itself depends today what is done by the two great nations in uh, the two great nations in the uh, 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 in the two Indies. Italy engages in it now only in a secondary way. The Portuguese dealt in the Indies as conquerors. The laws hampering commerce that the Dutch imposed at present on the commerce of the petty Indian princes were established by the Portuguese before them. The House of Austria had a prodigious fortune. Charles inherited Burgundy together with Castile and Aragon and succeeded in an empire. In order to procure for him a new kind of greatness, the universe expanded in order a new world obedient to him appeared. The Americas. Christopher Columbus discovered America and through Spain sent sent no more forces than that of a minor European prince would could have sent. It brought into subjugation two great empires and other great states. While the Spanish were discovering and conquering the world, the Portuguese were establishing their conquests and discoveries in the East. These two nations met. They had recourse to Pope Alexander VI, who made famous the line of demarcation and thus gave a uh, 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 judgment to, on a great lawsuit. Right? They saw the, the Pope to solve this dispute between Persia, Portuguese. But the other nations of Europe did not let the, uh, them enjoy this division and quiet. Um, the Dutch drove out the Portuguese, um, uh, out, uh, drove the Portuguese out of much of East Indies, and various nations set up establishment in America. The French and the, the, the basically the French and the uh, English, right? Uh, at first, the Spanish con uh, considered the newly discovered lands as objects of conquest. The people more refined than they saw them as objects of commerce and as such directed their attention to them. Many people acted so wisely that they gained the empire to trading companies who governed those distant states only for trade and made secondary power without incur encumbering the principal state. The colonists formed there are a kind of dependence of which there are very few examples among the ancient colonies, because those of today belong neither to the state itself or to the commercial company established in that state. Um, so therefore, those colonies were like independent cities up there like this. They either had to be helped to do. These are part of that, but then they're not, you know. Um, the purpose of these colonies is to engage in commerce under better conditions than one had with, has with neighboring peoples with whom all advantages were reciprocal. Uh, it had been established that only the mother country can trade with the colony. This was done with a very good reason, for the goal of, for the, goal of the establishment was to extend commerce, not to found a town or an empire. So that's why the, this is the way that they had rules what you do it to another country. Thus, uh, in Europe, it remained a fundamental law that any commerce with a foreign co colony is regarded as a pure uh, as a pure monopoly enforceable by the laws of the country, and one must not judge th uh, this by the laws and examples of the ancient people, which are hardly applicable. In a sense, right? Except the Carthaginians, as seen as the. It was acknowledged that the commerce established between the mother country does not uh, include permission to trade in the colonies, where it uh, where it concludes to be prohibited to them. Uh, the uh, this is mercantilism. This is the basis of mercantilism. In that sense, right? The advantage this advantages of uh, the disadvantages of the colonies, which lose their liberty of commerce, is visibly compensated by the protection of the mother country, which defends them by her arms to maintain them by their laws. What follows from uh, this is a third law of Europe, 
when that when foreign commerce is prohibited with a colony, one can navigate its seas only when this is established by treaty. So therefore, that they can, in other words, they can they can navigate there between established by treaties. So therefore, um, so it follows from this a third law that 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 when foreign commerce is prohibited with a colony. One can navigate its seas only when this is established by treaty. Nations which are to the entire universe what individuals are to the state govern themselves as do the latter by natural right. And by laws they have made themselves made for themselves. Right? So therefore, this is the idea of nations. This is he accepts the Hobbesian, he's giving except the Hobbesian metaphor, right? The natural right, right? Therefore, they're governed by natural right in this sense. And are governed by the laws they them give themselves. The Carthaginians required that the Romans uh, required the Romans to navigate no further than certain limits, just as the Greeks required the king of Persia to stay away uh, 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 from the sea coast, as a horse could run a race. The the extreme distance of our colonies is not a drawback for their security. Yet it is. Uh, yet if the mother country is so far away for their defense, the nations that are rivals of uh, of the mother country are no less far away for their conquest. In addition, this distance makes those who go there establish themselves unable to, in other words, establish themselves unable to take up the way of life of such different climates. They are obliged to get all the comforts of life from the country from which they had come. The Carthaginians, in order to make the Sardinians and the Corsicans more dependent, prohibit them from planting, sowing, and doing anything uh, on, uh, 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 of the like on the penalty of death. They sent them their food from. They sent them their food from Africa. Uh, we have come to the same point without making uh, uh, such harsh laws as commerce, commercial goods come. Um, our colonies in the Antilles are admirable. They have objects of commerce that we do not and could not. They lack uh, that which is the object of our commerce. The consequence of the discovery of America was to link Asia and Africa to Europe. America furnished Europe with the material for its commerce that uh, uh, the vast part of Asia uh, uh, called the East Indies. Silver, that metal so useful to commerce as a sign, is also the basis for the greatest commerce of the universe, uh, of the universe as a commodity. Finally, voyages to Africa became necessary, they furnished men to work the mines and lands of Africa. So therefore, this is... Europe had succeeded to a high degree of power that nothing in history has accomplished. Europe has accomplished, has reached such a high degree of power that nothing in history has comparable to it. If one considers the immense uh, immensities of expenditure, the size of military engagement, the number of troops, and the continuous upkeep, even when there are... Uh, even when they are the up, mo, the most useless and are only for ostentation. Father D. Luha says that the internal commerce of China is greater than that of the, all of Europe. This might be, for our external commerce did not increase our internal commerce. Europe carries on the commerce and navigation of the three other uh, 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 of the three uh, the other three parts of the world, just as France, England, and Holland carries on all the navigations and commerce of Europe. So France, England. 22, on the health that Spain drew from America. If Europe had been founded on so many advantages, uh, uh, if Europe had been founded on the advantages in commerce, with America, it would be natural to believe that Spain would have gained even greater ones. It drew from the new discovered world so prodigious quality of gold and silver that there was no possible comparison to what had been uh, there uh, with what there had previously been. But what one would never have suspected, poverty made it fail almost everywhere. Philip II who succeeded Charles was obliged to declare bankruptcy, as everyone knows, and scarcely any prince has suffered more than he from the grumble, the insolence, and the rebellious of the various poorly paid troops. After this, uh, after this time, the Spanish monarchy went into an un, uh, uninterrupted decline. This was because there was an internal and physical vice in the nature of its, this wealth, which made it hollow 
and this vice increased daily. Gold and silver are wealth of uh, are wealth of fiction, or a sign. These signs are very durable and almost indestructible by their nature. The more they increase, the more they lose their worth, because they represent because they represent fewer things. When they conquered Mexico and Peru, the Spaniards abandoned natural wealth in order to have wealth of sign, which gradually became debased. Gold and silver uh, are very scarce in Europe. Uh, in Spain, suddenly mistress of great wealth, these meadows conceived expectations she had never before. The wealth founded in the conquered countries was not, however, in proportion to that of their minds. The Indians had part of it, and the, moreover, those people who used silver and gold only for the magnificence of temples of their gods and the palaces of their kings did not search for it the same avarice as we. Finally, they did not have the secret of extracting metals from all their minds, but only from uh, uh, those which fire separated the metals. They did not know how to use mercury and perhaps were even unfamiliar with it. And nonetheless, there, were, uh, uh, there, was a, uh, uh, there was double the silver in Europe. This is evident uh, 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 when the price everything, uh, of everything perch, uh, uh, perchable doubled. The Spanish worked the mines as uh, 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 excavated the mountains and invented machines to draw back the waters, br br break ore and separate it. They uh, and they marked the lives of the uh, they mocked the lives of the Indians. They worked them mercilessly. There uh, there was soon uh, double the silver in Europe and profits diminished by half for Spain. And each year only the same quantities metal had become half as precious. As uh, the time doubled, the silver doubled again and the profit decreased by half. The profit decreased by more than half, and here's how. In order to take gold from the mines, in order to give it required preparation and carry it to France, there had to be some expense. I assume that this was one as 64, and when silver is doubled and uh, uh, was consequently half as precious, the expense was two to 64. Thus, the fleets that carried the same quantities of gold to Spain carried really the, what was valued as half as much as uh, the cost of such, as uh, as as uh, 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 much and cost twice as much. It f followed uh, 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 if one thing follows from another. Uh, 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 one thing's follow if, uh, if one thing follows if one follows things. Sorry, I'm losing my entire. This is long. From the doubling to the next, one will see how the causes of powerlessness of Spanish wealth progressed. The mines of the Indies have been worked for some 200 years. I assume that the qualities so present in the commercial world is that which there is before the discovery is 32 to 1. That is, that it has doubled five times in 200 more years. And the same quantity will be that there was before the discovery as 64 to 1 that it will double again. Now, uh, now at present, 50 quinticals of gold or equals four, five, and six ounces of gold. And when it gives only two, the mine covers only, uh, the mine covers only his cost. In 200 years, it gives only four. The miner will still make his costs. Therefore, uh, there will be little profit in mining gold. The same reason follows for silver, except that working silver mines is little more advantageous than gold mines. Now, one discovers mines so abundant that they give more profit. The more abundant they are, the sooner the profit will end. The Portuguese found, uh, had found so much gold in Brazil that soon the Spanish profit must necessary diminish markedly and as uh, uh, their own. I have more than once heard uh, deplored the blindness of the Council of Francis I for refusing Christopher Columbus's proposal to go to Indies. In truth, one did perhaps, uh, in truth, one did perhaps imprudently a very wise thing. Spain acted like the foolish king who acted who asked that everything he touched turned to gold, and who was obliged to go back to the gods and beg that they put the end to this destruction, to his destruction, to destruction. 
the companies and banks that many nations established completed the debasement of gold and silver in their uh, uh, status as signs. For by new fictions, they uh, uh, so increased the signs for uh, uh, for produce uh, for products produce that gold and silver performed that office only in part and became less paper money or promissory notes or means banks and establishments. Right? Thus, public credit replaced mines and diminished still further profit from the Spanish and the, 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 uh, uh, further the profit the Spanish driven from theirs. It is true that Dutch commerce with the Indies gave some pr uh, gave some price to the Spanish commodities for the Dutch carried silver to barter for the commodities of the East. In Europe, they relieved the Spanish uh, uh, for part of, their, of, of the produce, which was overabundant. And this commerce, which seems to concern Spain only indirectly, is advantageous to Spain as well as those nations that engage in it themselves. By all that has just been said, one can judge the ordinance of the Great, Cons uh, 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 the Great Council of Spain, which prohibited the use of gold and silver for gilding and other su uh, uh, superfluities. This as if the state of Holland made a decree prohibiting the consumptions of cinnamon. <laughs> in other words, no. by, reason, by reasoning, my reasoning does not apply to all mines. Those of Germany and Hungary from which one gets little more than cost are very useful. They are found in the principal state. They employ several thousand men who consume over uh, the overabundant pro produce. The mines are properly man uh, are, are properly man a manufactory for the country. So manufacturing employment and things like that. The German and Hungarian mines make cultivating the land worthwhile, and working those of Mexico and Peru destroys the cultivation. So, so the German mines are, they produce they makes the the cultivation profitable, and this is the mines in Mexico and Peru destroy cultivation. The Indies and Spain are two powers. Uh, uh, under the same master, but the Indies are a principal one, and the Spain is a secondary one. And in vain policy wants to reduce the principal one to a secondary one. The Indies continue to attract Spain to themselves. Of uh, tw uh, of fifty uh, of the fifty million in commodities which go to the Indies every year, Spain furnishes two and a half million. Therefore, in the Indies engage in a commerce where fifty million in Spain uh, uh, in uh, 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 and worth only two, two and a half million. An accidental tax that does not depend on industry of the nations, the number of inhabitants or the cultivation of the lands is a bad kind of wealth. In other words, does it, does not, in other words, an accidental tax that does not depend on the industry nation, the number of inhabitants, the cultivation of the land is a bad kind of wealth. The king of Spain who receives great sums from his custom houses and cadets is in this regard only a very wealthy individual in a very pure, pure state. Everything goes from foreigners to him, with his subjects taking almost no part in it. This commerce is independent of the goods, of the good and the bad fortune of his kingdom. So therefore, good fortune and bad fortune. So the Spanish, this is the, pro the problem with Spain. They don't, they don't, they're a very rich king and a very poor people. If some of the province of Castile gave him a sum like that of the customs, his houses in Cadiz, his power would be much greater. His wealth would be only the result of the country's wealth. These provinces would enliven all the others, and altogether they would be better positioned to support their relative burdens. Instead of a great treasury, one would one uh, uh, one would have a great people. So in other words, he. In other words, he gets his wealth by the trade of cadets, and the, the, the people, the country's poor. The land is not developed. It's, it's been destroyed. It's been uncultivated. It's been unprofitable. It has not been developed. It has not industry. Those people are lazy, and arrogant, in that sense. And therefore, this he says here. So therefore, if 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 they if the provinces produced the wealth that cadets produced, he would have been more powerful, more great. Um, and it would, it would have been instead of a great treasury, a great people. Okay, that's the whole point. Chapter 23, and this is the last chapter of the book, a problem. It is not for me to pronounce on the question of whether it would, have been, uh, it would be more worthwhile for Spain if it cannot engage in the commerce by itself to open up the Indies to foreigners. 
I, sh I say, uh, I shall say only that it is suitable for it to put the fewest obstacles in the way of commerce that its policy can permit. When the commodities that the various nations carry to the Indies are expensive there, the Indies give many of their com uh, commodities, which are gold and silver, for a few of the foreign commodities. The opposite happens when the latter have a low price. It would, be, it would perhaps be useful for these nations to work against each other, so the commodities they carry to Indian, in Indies would always be inexpensive. These are, uh, these are principles that must be examined without, however, separating them from other considerations. The security of the Indies, the usefulness of a single custom house, the dangers of great change, the drawback that one foresees, and uh, which are often less dangerous than one, those that one cannot foresee. The, the drawbacks of that one foresees and which are often less dangerous than the one those that can't foresee. So those are the considerations that must be drawn for these considerations. Well, the securities of the Indies, the usefulness of the single custom house in that sense, the dangers of change and the drawbacks that, that one, for, one foresees, one force can foresee, which are less dangerous than the ones that we can't foresee. Okay. And that's how he ends this chapter. Well, this has been a long chapter, but a book, I mean, book, book, on uh, this long book. We're stopping here. If you have any comments or questions, please put it below. Um, if you have uh, uh, liked, the, liked the video, like it, like it, share it with a friend, share it on social media and things like this. If you have not subscribed, subscribe. Again, encourage others to subscribe. If you didn't like it, you can, of course, say no and say why you didn't do it. Um, if you are interested in helping me do what I what I do here and help me contribute to this, you can do so by uh, 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 becoming a, a member of Subscribe Star and subs Patreon. And you know, there's not much there. I understand, but okay, whatever. Um, uh, but you know, it would be nice. You know, helps. You know, you're getting something from me. I, I'm doing products. I'm doing work all the time. So ooh, maybe you don't think it's valuable. You know, people are not. I'm surprised people are not watching these. Okay, they're long. They're long videos. Not watching them as much. Okay, I understand. Uh, the, okay, um, another way you can help if you're not going to do the subscribe to my Patreon, uh, uh, you can buy one of my books. Links below. Um, again, these pub are published on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, my contemporary political theory and political thought things are uh, two, uh, 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 Tuesday, Thursdays, and. Uh, yes, and um, something special, a live stream or messing around or something like that uh, is on Fridays. Well, okay, take care and have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.